Hello, welcome to Zigma Tech Learning Hub. I will be your instructor for fine art. You can call it visual art as well, cultural and creative art. Now for this class, we are going to be taking our exercises from the exam guide app. Now, if you don't have this application installed already in your device, I will advise you download this app in order for you to follow along this class. Now, Exam Guide is a leading educational app that helps students prepare adequately for exams, for various exams, such as UTME, post-UTME, WASE, GCE, KCPE, IJMB, JUPEP, Calbepedia, BESE, JSCE, NCEE, NECO, to mention but a few. You can download the app from our website, www.examguide.com or you can download it as well as using your Google Play Store. Please subscribe to our channel and turn on the notification bell to update, to be updated on new videos as we upload. Now, if you're ready for today's class, okay, let's get started. All right, welcome once again to another beautiful edition of Culture and Creative Arts. Today, we're going to look at color theory. Come on now, how many of you is excited as I'm excited today. Okay, all right, for me, I'm so excited because I like talking about colors. I love colors. I love colors. I don't know about you. Do you love color the way I do? Oh, yes. All right, if you do now, let's veg into it and then see all the things we're going to know about color because I know there are a lot of misconceptions that you know that today I'm going to debunk. Are you ready to go with me? Okay, now let's go there. Yeah, today we are going to talk about the color wheel. You see how beautiful these colors play. We are going to discuss all of that. We are going to talk about the tertiary colors, secondary color, primary colors. I mentioned but a few. But now let's look at our objective. Now at the end of this class, I would there are a lot of things I want you to know. Number one thing I want you to know is to know the definition of the word color, what exactly color is, and the meaning. Now number two, you'll be able to state the classes of color, and then number three, you will learn to explain the properties of color. Now listen. Inside each and every one of this, there are other informations you will get. Now, don't just think that, okay, we are going to learn just seven, eight things. Yeah, yeah. There are a lot of things you gain in the course of what the study. Like, you also know who was the very first person that experimented about color, his name. We are a little bit about, you know, about color. Now, we look at that, but we will learn by the end of this class, you also explain, like, you learn to explain the properties of color. You also learn how to explain what, how to mix color. Now, you should be able to state the importance of color. You'll be able to describe the family of color. And finally, you'll learn to interpret the interpretation of what each color. What does this color mean to this man is quite different from what it means to this other person. So without any further ado, let's get started. Now, introduction. Now, we are very much surrounded by colors within our immediate environment and in nature. Now, we live with colors daily in as much as we can. We see color everywhere. It is easier to remember colors of an object even more than the shape of the object. Now, you can relate with that. You can actually remember my color than how, you know, my head looks like. So, you know, okay, he's a black man. He's a white man. You pick that first at a glance before you start talking about what? His shape. Okay, he's a white man, but he has what, you know, this, um, is it up your own mango head? <laughs> Forgive me that. But you understand what I'm trying to talk about. Yes. So, you, you, you tend to get... In contact, you relate with color first before you start relating with what the shape. Now, people have their own color preference and they give various meaning to what such colors. So, I just want you to put that as the back of your mind. That's our introduction. Now, people call color, color can mean so many things to, me, to people. Now, if you watch, look at the image we have there. We have calm, we have content, we have jolly, we have greed, we have interested, we have a afraid, we have surprises. It means a lot to different people. So each and every one of this color tells a different story. So that's exactly what this image is trying to explain. Now let's look at what the discovery on color theory. Now the study of a science, the study of science has shown that color is present in what? Light. Now the, color, the study of science shows that color what is present with light. What does that mean? It means the absence of light is the absence of color. So when there is no light, there is no color. Hello? Okay, you want to doubt that? Close your eyes. Close your eyes. Now, which of the colors can you see? Now, you see, since your eyes are closed, light is not entering through your eyes. So therefore, everything is what? Black. It's just dark. It's vague. 
That's exactly what it means. So if you close your eyes, you don't see anything. But if you open your eyes, light comes into your eyes and then you what it reflects. So that's exactly what the study of science how to show that. So one of such great scientists who made such remarkable discovery on color theory was what Isaac Newton. Is who? Isaac Newton. Have you heard that name before? Sounds strange, right? So Isaac Newton was the very first scientist that experimented what about color. He discovered the color of what the spectrum, which is what in a kind of a, in his kind of sequential arrangement, you know, of what the rainbow. You know the rainbow. How the rainbow is. You have your the way it was sequentially arranged. So when Isaac Newton did his practicals, he discovered that the color in the spectrum was sequentially was arranged. So in the rainbow format now that is what through this through his glass prism you know he allowed white light to pass through the glass prism and now it now produced the seven colors of what a rainbow in the spectrum now that gave us what the the, the definition of the word what color now in the spectrum we saw colors like red we saw colors like yellow we saw blue we saw green we saw indigo and then we saw what violent so these are what the seven colors of what rainbow that was seen by isaac newton's in the spectrum after practicalizing what that i still believe there are colors that i have not seen or that you have not seen and maybe by the time we get to heaven we'll see those colors and those will be some of the things that will be you know mind-blowing by the time you get to heaven but however here on earth we have just what seven colors now inside these seven colors you can create a million billion colors out of what these seven colors don't worry as we move on you're going to see all that as we verge into our class Okay, now this is Isaac Newton conducting the practicals. You see, he allowed the white light to pass through this glass prism. Now, this thing is a what is a glass prism. Now, now reflected the seven colors of what of rainbow in the spectrum. Now, if you watch, this image did not capture what exactly how the color looks like, but this very one captured it completely. So that's exactly the practical Isaac Newton did to prove that color is an illusion. Is a real of light. It's not a thing. It's something you perceive with your eyes. You don't. You can't touch a color with your hands. What you can touch is what the color pigment. In the course of the study, we are going to explain this one after the other. All right. So now let's continue. Now definition of what color. Now, before we define color, I want us to know that color has two names. Another name for color is known as what hue. What did I say? Hue is another name of what of a color. So now what is color? Color is simply the real of decomposed white light as reflected in the rainbow colors referred to as what? The spectrum. Now the seven colors you see in the, red, in the rainbow is what exactly what explain colors. Now I'm giving you three definitions. Number the first definition I said, I said color is a simply what? The decomposed white light that reflected, that is reflected in the what? Rainbow or in the spectrum. However, Color is also what? A ray of light. That's the simplest definition. Now, what is color? Color is a ray of light. It's as simple as that. It is really the ray of light. That's what color is. Now, the final definition, not really the final definition, but one other definition I want you to put in the back of your mind is color is the decomposed white light. It's the decomposed white light that passes through the glass prism that produces the seven colors of rainbow in the spectrum. It is the decomposed white light that passes through this, through this that. You understand? There's no T. You can add T there for me. You understand? If you're copying. So color is the decomposed white light that passes what through the glass prism that produces the seven hues of rainbow in the spectrum. All right. So this is a bar chart that explained exactly what the color is. Now, if you watch, this is a glass prism. It's triangular in shape. It's a triangular what? Re uh, glass prism. Now, if you allow white light, now this is a source of the white light that hits the glass prism. Now, it will automatically reflect the seven colors of what? Of rainbow in, a spect in the spectrum. Now, this is the spectrum. You understand? So, you, you allow white light to pass. It will just reflect these colors from the spectrum. Now, that is exactly what Isaac Newton tried to explain. Now, these are the seven colors of rainbow that is being reflected in the spectrum. You have the red, you have the orange, you have the yellow, you have the green, you have the blue, you have the indigo, and then you have what? The violet. So this is what exactly what color it tells. This is just the definition of what? The word color. So whenever you say define color in a diagram, they're asking you to draw this diagram. All right. So now let's proceed. Now let's talk about the pigments of color. The pigments of color. Now there are three major pigments of color. 
three major pigments of color, and they are the number one is what ink, number two is paint, and number three is dye. We have ink, paint, and dye. Not in any order. They are not in any order. You can say dye, paint, and ink. Paint, ink, and dye. Anyhow, you want to place them. But just know that the pigments of colors are what ink, paint, and dye. Now, what is dye? Dye is used to change the color of what fabrics. Now, when you add the word dye, it's not as in dead, as in dye. No, dye as in to change the color of what a fabric. It comes in powdered form. Some of them come in what liquid forms. So we have different types of dye. That is a different case of. There's a different. We'll talk about it when we start discussing dye. All right. Now the next one is what ink. Now ink is used for printing designs on clothes, books, paper, carton, etc. For those of you that know the calligraphy and uh, the calligraphic um, artists, they write, they do, they work a whole lot with ink. Even the printers, they work with what ink. Even your computer, your computer printer work with what the ink. The computer printer does not work with the paint. Neither does it work with the dye. It works with what the ink. So now, why the dye is used for what clothes to change the color of the fabric. In your school, you should have heard of the word, or even normally you should have heard of the word tire dye. So that is one pigment of what of color. Now remember, color is not a thing; it's an illusion. It is what you perceive with what with your eye. You cannot touch it. What you touch is the pigment. Is the pigment that pigment can be anything? The pigment can be white. The pigment can be red. The pigment can be anything. So, but it is by the time you know the the reflection of light is being transferred to it, and then there is this spark. It shaded itself, you know, into different colors. Now, the next one I'll talk about is what paint. Now, paint is used in forms of watercolor, poster color, acrylic, gouache. To mention but a few, all of these are used to bring out what forms in a painting. Now, to aid the brush or the palette knife, you know, to make the work of art come out very sound and interesting. So, paint is another pigment of what art. Now, remember, I told you there are three major pigments of art, which is ink, paint, and dye. Have this at the back of your mind. So that you don't forget it. So whenever I ask you, what are the three pigments of color? You say ink, paint, and dye. All right. So now let's take a look at them. Now look at this. You can relate with these guys, right? Oh, okay. I just want to believe I can relate with them. Now these are paint. These are paint. All these are paint. All right. So can you relate with this other guy? Oh yes, you should. Let me let me see if I can make it bold. Yes. Now this is a tie and dye. You know, they are trying to create a very beautiful JC tie and dye fabric. This is the end product of what they are trying to make now. This is exactly how it comes out. So, this is done. You can get this with what? Dye. So, this is a dye solution. Now, this is a liquid dye. We have the powdered kind of dye. All right. So, let's look at the next one. Now, this is the ink. You can we have different colors of ink. We have the black ink, we have the blue ink, we have the red ink, we have the magenta, to mention but a few. So, you see, so this is what the ink. Now, and there are the three major pigments of color. Okay. Now, color is an essential element in art. It adds beauty to the work of art and makes them what's more attractive. Now, there is no way you can do an artwork without what the aid of what a color. And then you cannot just use a color without knowing what the color stands for and what the color represents. And then apart from that, you cannot just use a color without knowing how to mix these colors and create these colors. That's why you have to sit back with me as we verge into what the theory of color is an interesting topic. I want to believe by the end of this topic, you should be, you should be, gen you should be a genius, you know, in making use of your color. Now, such works becomes more solid with color. It affects our choice of goods and materials. Color affects our mood at any given situation, you know, and on different occasions. Now, you know, to some persons, when they are mourning, they use white clothes. When you see them wearing white and white, you just know, okay, these guys are mourning. And some persons, you see them wearing black and black, you know, okay, they are mourning. So some persons use these colors to differentiate different occasions from what different. Now, even in weddings, there are some persons that use, you see, cockroach brown. You know, in weddings, you start hearing foreign strange, strange colors. So that's exactly what the impact of what color does in the field of life. Now, however, color is seen by an artist as a kind of what pigment applied on a surface, shape, or design to make it more appealing to the what, to the eyes and to the sense. Did you understand that? So color is it's, it's, it's seen as an artist, you know, as, as, as a pigment to beautify a thing. Now imagine, imagine this, for example, let me use this as an example. Now imagine this. Somebody might say this is colorless, but it's not colorless. It has a touch of a blue, you know? Now imagine this without the color. It will look weird, kind of. 
So you, you, we, we do all this. We learn to make use of color to beautify products, things. You understand? If you're school, if you're going to a school now, imagine after building a house and then it's not painted. How would the house look like? So, but by the time you add color to it, you now bring out the beauty of the house. All right. So now, exactly what I'm trying to say. You see this nose mat, how it's branded, this the hood and the t-shirt, even the package design. You see, that's all this you can get it was because of the help of what of color. Now let's look at the classes of what color. The classes of color. Now color can be classified in different ways. So many groups. So we're going to take them one step at a time and then we'll pick out each and every one of them. So I want you to be patient and follow me through this class as we explain you know, the classes of color. Now the first class of color we'll talk about is what the primary color. Is what? The primary color. Now the primary color they are otherwise called the basic colors. Now this is because they cannot be obtained by the mixing of what any other color. If you bring two different colors and mix them together, you can't get primary color. Primary color, they exist naturally on their own. They exist what naturally on their own. Now they form the source of what most of what other colors. It is these three colors, they are the foundation of every other color. With these three major primary colors, they are the foundation of what every other color. Now remember, primary colors are colors that cannot be gotten by the mixture of what any other color. They exist naturally on their own. Examples of the primary colors are red, yellow, and blue. Red, yellow, and blue. These are the primary colors. In art, such colors which are in form of pigments are obtained from natural substances like plants. Sometimes such colors are represented by their first alphabet. For example, red is represented with what? The arrow. Yellow is represented with what? The Y. And B is represented with what? The and blue rather is represented with what? With blue. That is why you have what? The arrow. You know, we have the arrow GB. You understand? Uh, that is for, for those of us that are um, that are in the printing press, you understand that better. But the ROYB is the primary basic color. All right. So now let's look at it. Now this is the color wheel of the primary color. The color wheel of what? The primary color. You see the red it flows down to yellow and then it goes down to what? The blue. So these are the primary color. All right. Now let's talk about the next one, which is the secondary color. It is the secondary color. Now the secondary colors, these are a mixture of two primary colors in equal proportion that results into a secondary color. By the time you bring two primary colors, like the red and the yellow, and mix them together in equal proportion, you will get a corresponding word, secondary color. I hope you understand that. The primary colors and um, secondary colors are colors that are gotten from the mixture of two primary colors. Now another name for secondary colors is known as the binary hue or colors. Remember I told you underneath for color is what? Hue. So if you hear, define binary color. Beautiful. That's a strong question. And then you get confused. No, what they're just simply asking you, they're asking you to define secondary color. Underneath for secondary color is known as what? The binary color. Just as the primary color is known as the basic color. You get that. All right. So now, this color can be gotten from the mixture of what? Two primary color. Examples. We have the red plus yellow will give you orange. I have red plus blue to give you purple or violet. I have blue plus yellow that will not give you what? Green. I'll take it again. Red plus yellow, orange. Red plus blue, purple or violet. Blue plus yellow is red. And is green. Now, these are the what, three secondary colors. So automatically, the three secondary colors are orange, purple, and green. What are the three secondary colors? Orange, purple, and green. So they're the three major secondary colors. Now, the set of colors by the right hand side are what? The secondary colors. All the colors at the right hand side, they're known as what? The secondary colors colors all right so now let's just go and check exactly what we have now this is the image i'm trying to explain up now if you see red sorry let's go back now red plus yellow will give you what orange yellow plus blue will give you green 
Blue plus red will give you violet or purple. So it is known as what? The primary and the secondary colors. So they are the secondary colors. Now this is the color wheel of a secondary color. You see red plus blue will give you purple at the middle. Blue plus yellow will give you green. And then you have yellow plus red will give you what? Orange. So that's the secondary color. Now the next color we'll talk about is what? The intermediate color. Now the intermediate color, they are the mixture of a primary color and a neighboring secondary color in the color wheel. Listen. A primary color and a neighboring secondary color in what the color will in such a mixture the primary colors normally appears dominant because it is what double it comes in double in that particular com um, composition so if you're trying to create an intermediate color now it is the extra addition of what the which means one of the primary color will be more than the other one that will not give you what a tertiary color now this is why such primary colors is written first when writing the intermediate color. Now, for example, if I want to create um, um, a purple red or a red purple, you can actually call it a red violet. Now, the only way you add more red to the already existing violet color, it will not give you what? Red violet. So there is nothing like reddish purple or purple red. It's what? Red violet. So you represent the primary color first that appears twice than first before you call the next one so another one is what red blue you know red plus blue which is the red violet now is the combination of red and blue that will not give you what's the purple so that is an example of that now since there are three primary colors and three secondary colors the total number of intermediate colors shall be what six so we have six intermediate colors now two of each primary colors and two of each secondary color so that is exactly how you get your intermediate color now for example you have the primary plus secondary gives you what intermediate now let's see now red violet red plus violet will give you red violet red plus orange will give you red orange or red, uh, yellow green you see green plus yellow plus green will give you what yellow orange now also have yellow plus orange will give you what you know yellow orange like i said now yellow plus violet and blue plus violet will give you what blue violet just to mention but a few. So now, that will give you a total number of what? Six intermediate color. I just hope you're not missing it. Remember, I said intermediate color is the mixture of a neighboring secondary and primary color to a neighboring what? Secondary color in the color wheel. That is, that's about the intermediate color. Okay, let's take a look at this diagram. Awesome. You see how harmonious this image looks. You see how the color blends looks so interesting and so clean and so whoa so that is exactly what you know the 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 intermediate color is telling us for example if you you see how it goes down it's crescended down into and it's just what the intermediate color is trying to explain now however further experiments with colors has shown that the number of intermediate colors is unlimited because the proportion of each mixture can be varied towards an unlimited what degree if you watch that image i showed you let's go back a little bit now if you see the intensity of this orange color here is not the same thing with this so you can get a million orange color from the intermediate that is exactly what the intermediate color is trying to say you can break it down to countless of colors just from one color so it depends on your what on your mixture all right so that is that about what the intermediate now in other words there are there is no one yellow green that is possible by mixing green and yellow you can get several yellow greens if more yellow is used you have different you know different crescents of what that particular color now a difference yes we have a different crescent of that particular color all right now let's continue now the color wheel illustrates the relationship between the various hues now the further away hue are from are from each other now the lesser they have in what's common and the higher their contrast now the analogous harmonious combination colors adjacent towards one another in the color wheel is a perfect example that and what i'm just trying to explain is exactly that image you saw the very image you saw previously is exactly what i'm trying to explain here such as we have the red we have the red orange down towards the red orange orange hey <laughs> did you understand you have the red the red orange the red orange orange and then you have the orange and then it starts going down down to the lightest 
of it all. All right. So this is a perfect example of what, you know, will I just use a monochromatic kind of grading? You see the blue crescended down harmoniously. So that's exactly what I'm trying to explain with the intermediate color. All right, so now let's look at what the tertiary. We'll have to be fast because I'm running out of time. All right, tertiary colors. Now, the mixture of two secondary colors gives you a tertiary color. If you bring two secondary colors, you mix them together, you get a tertiary color. Now, this can actually be obtained, you know, because the first color will actually neutralize the second color. So I would not want to bother you with that. So, but just know that if you bring two secondary colors and mix them together, you get what? A tertiary color. Now, let's see. A bar chart I did on what the tertiary color. Now the tertiary color is orange plus violet. We'll give you what reddish, what brown. You have orange plus green, you know, smoky yellow, just like that. That is what tertiary color. Now this is a very perfect example of what tertiary color looks like. Some of the words are, you know, you get in tertiary color, you start getting strange names like the auburn, the vermilion, you have the magenta, you have the the tail to mention, but if you so this is a perfect example of what the tertiary color if you mix two secondary color together it will give you a tertiary color now let's look at the complementary color now complementary or contrasting color now these are colors that sit opposite each other in the color wheel now when two primary colors are mixed it becomes a complementary or a third we can call it a tried now they are often referred to as opposite color when describing them in reference to the color wheel for example, purple, which is the violet, is complementary to yellow. I will explain that to you. Orange, which is a mixture of red and yellow, is complementary what? to blue. And green is complementary to what? Red. So complementary colors are colors that sit opposite each other in the color wheel. Now let's look at example of complementary color. You see, the yellow is directly opposite what? to purple. That's complementary. Blue is complementary to what? Orange. Red is complementary to what? To green. So these are colors that sit opposite each other in the color wheel. I want you to know them. Try as much as possible to differentiate between each and every one of them. So this is how far we can take for today. So till we meet again. But before we go, I want us to look at what we've learned so far. Let's take a quick look at what we've discovered, what we've discussed in this section. All right. Now, first of all, we looked at the, um, the, the discovery of the theory of what? Of color, the color theory. And then we went further to define what color is. And then I told us, and we also discussed the pigments of color. Finally, we also talked about what? Some of the classes of color. Um, in this class, we've talked about, about four different classes. We talked about the primary colors, talked about the secondary colors, talked about the intermediate colors, talked about the um, tertiary colors, and then we talked about what? The complementary colors. So these are the first five steps of colors that we we'll discuss in this section. Now, in subsequent sections, we are going to discuss the properties and other properties of color, the interpretation of color, a lot, a lot, even color mixture, how you can mix colors to get exactly what you want. So now, having said this, let's go over to Q and A. Let me see how far we've gone. So, Q and A. Now, let me ask you, define color. I gave you three definitions of color. First, I told you color have two names. One is hue, and the other one is color. And then what I say color is? I told you that color is the passage of white light through the glass prism that produces the seven hues of rainbow in the spectrum. And I also told you that color is a rail of light. It is the decomposed white light that passes through the glass prism that produces the seven colors of rainbow in the spectrum. And those are the things I told you about color. I will also mention, I ask you now, now mention two classes of colors yes primary color secondary color tertiary color intermediate color complementary color you are very very correct okay so now let's go into the exam guide all right you you know what we're studying now cultural creative arts so creative arts you click on creative arts you check it and then let's click on random so the topic we treated is application of colors or application of colors in arts. We'll click it and then we'll say OK and then get started. So let's see question number three. Let's answer question number three. The, the reference to two wheel, to color wheel, opposite, sorry, in reference to color wheel, opposite colors are referred to as dash. 
opposite colors are referred to as dash. A, complementary, B, harmonious, intermediate, primary, or tertiary. What are the colors that sit opposite each other? That's just what we talked about. Now, complementary color sits opposite each other in the color wheel. If you say complementary color, you are very correct. All right, so now let's look at the next one. Now, which of the following art material comes in one color? Which of the following art material comes in one color? Da, da, da. And then if you click, if you say char uh, chalk, charcoal, crayon, pastel, and watercolor. So which of them comes in one color? Come on, it's obvious now. Charcoal comes in one color. And that is the answer. Thank you for participating in today's class. You can practice more questions using the exam guide. Now the app scores and give a detailed explanation of all the questions at the end of your practice test. Now you can learn a particular topic of interest with different modes like study mode, mock mode, and practice mode. It also have other features that make learning fun. Now it is a must have for all serious students. Download the app from www.examguide.com if you don't have it yet. See you in the next class. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel, hit the notification bell, and then share this video to anyone you know that would benefit from it. Thank you and bye-bye.